We continue our conversation on Women's History Month with a focus on diversity, equality, and inclusion in the workplace. Here with more on how businesses can become a more safe environment for all, we're now joined by Dr. Tanja Coleman, president of Reimagine Organization Development. Good morning to you. Thanks for being here. Good morning. Thanks for having me. So before we break down some tips for businesses, first help us understand the issues in the workplace that you're seeing. Many of the issues really resolve around individuals feel comfortable talking about race and equity. Also, just purely representation when we have only 8% or 41 women that are CEOs on Fortune 500 organizations. It tells you that there is a huge disparity between being able to get to the C-suite and then leadership positions, even when women are the most educated population in the country right now. That's a clear sign that there needs to be some effective change and some hypersensitivity and attention to this area. What can businesses and organizations do to help support women of color? Really, what they need to do is have conversations with their with the women in their organization and women of color as well. Make sure that they're included in highly visible projects and not excluded. Ensure that they have all the strategic information that they need to have to be the most effective in their roles. And ensure that they're part of high potential and leadership development programs. Many women of color have never had the experience of an executive coach or really had in-depth interpersonal awareness training or assessments to really understand what career derailers might be blocking or being obstacles to their continued success. So we need access to these tools in the same way that we see men have access to these tools and really help them ascend in their career to the plateaus and promotions that they want to achieve. Let's look forward post pandemic. What can businesses do to help support women post pandemic? Well, really some of the things that they can do is things that I felt they should have been doing all along, right? not looking at gaps in resumes. We know that women are the caretakers for their families, not just their children, for their families. So if grandmother is sick, if your mom or dad falls on an illness, usually it's the woman that sacrifices her career. And so you might see gaps in a resume. And oftentimes recruiters look over that because they look at it as a negative versus really just a, a life process. It's just something that happens in life oftentimes. Also looking at short stints on roles. If you have been in a role for a short period of time and you left, you can't really say anything negative about why you left. You may have left because you felt disenfranchised. You may have left because you were being sexually harassed. Those things aren't considered by many talent acquisition professionals. They just skip over. So those are some of the immediate things. And then now, as we knew many years ago, that individuals can effectively work from home. You can effectively do your job from home for most individuals. And the pandemic forced us to be more creative in that space. But now that many people have their arms around it, I think having some flexibility in working hours and types of work and when you work and how you work needs to happen. And that will really support women in the workplace because once again, women tend to be the caregivers. Really helpful information. For more info, you can visit reimagineod.org. Thank you so much for sharing your insight with us. Thank this you so much. It was nice being with you this morning. You too. All right, let's get another.